Okay, let's look at organic compounds. Organic compounds refer to the big molecules in your body, you know, in all living systems that's built on carbon as a backbone, okay? And these big compounds are what give you structure and function, all right? So they come in four types. You have carbohydrates, and one class of organic compounds. You have proteins, it's another class of organic compounds. You have fats, what we call lipids, another class. And then the fourth type of organic compounds we have are your nucleic acids, okay? So we'll cover these three. And we'll do this one later on in the semester. So let's begin with carbohydrates. So carbohydrates, as the name suggests, are basically carbons that are hydrated, okay? So the, the general formula for a carbohydrate is CH2O, meaning for every carbon you have, you'll have a water molecule around it, basically. So it's CH2O, okay? So for example, if you had, say, six carbons, then it would become C6. And since it must be a one to two to one ratio, then it's C6, H12, O6, okay? It's always, in the simplest form, it's usually one carbon to two hydrogen to one oxygen. One, uh, one to two to one ratio of CHO, okay? Now, carbohydrates come in several forms. So in their simplest forms, so your forms of carbohydrates. Okay. In its simplest form, you have what we call monosaccharides. These are the simplest forms of carbohydrates. And then monosaccharides, two of them can combine to form disaccharides. Okay. And when you have many monosaccharides linked together in long chains, they form polysaccharides. Okay, so you have monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides as the three common forms of carbohydrates. Let's look first then at the monosaccharides. So your monosaccharides, commonly come in as hexoses, meaning they have six carbons, hex means six. So they have six carbons in, in, in it. And, and if they have six carbons, then they must obligatorily have 12 H's and six oxygen, right? Because it must be a one to, one to two to one ratio. Or they may be pentoses, where you have five, pent means five, so then you have five carbons, which means you have 10 hydrogens and five oxygen. So that's a typical molecular formula for all hexoses and pentoses, all right, in general. So let's look at the hexoses first. Your common hexoses are glucose, I want you to, you to know how to draw for me the structural formula for glucose. And I want you to draw it this way. It's a, it's a ring. Like so. So there are five carbons in the ring. There's one, one right here, one carbon, two, three, four, five. No, in, in chemistry, these angles mean carbon. And here's number six up here. 
So six carbons, five in the ring, one, one off to the side. And then each carbon is more or less surrounded by H2O. So here you can have OH here, OH here, this is H, H, this one, OH is up. H right here, OH is down, and H, this one becomes CH2OH. This is glucose. No, it, they know how to draw it for me, okay? Again, form a ring, and on the first carbon, the OH is down. So it's down, down, up, down. If you want to have a way to memorize how these OHs are oriented, and it matters how they are oriented. So that's, that's glucose. Another common hexose is galactose. And this one is very similar to glucose in structure. So just, just try that one. So again, you have your ring. There, 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 there. And again, one off to the side. So in this case now, OH is down, OH is down, and here OH is up, and here OH is up. And that's it. That's the only difference between glucose and galactose, just how these OH, OHs are oriented. And it matters. Okay. This is galactose. Again, be able to, you should know how to draw it. I got to find a way to, to, to get that in your exam somehow. Okay, so, so that's glucose, galactose, and then fructose you can draw this. Fructose will, will, will only have four carbons in this ring. It's like this, like a shift over, like so. Okay. Again, this is, so this, it has a carbon like this, like this, and one like this, okay? So we have number one here, one carbon, two, three, four, five, six. You still have six carbons in, but it's just done a bit differently. So here, here is a carbon sitting right here. Here would be a H there, okay? Again, you can go down, I think it's down, down here, and H here. This is fructose. So you have three common hexos and, and they all have the same formula, C6H12O6. So these are structural isomers of each other, okay? Fru fructose, glucose, and galactose. Those are all monosaccharides, six carbon monosaccharides that are called hexoses. Now, while we're still on the monosaccharides, in terms of pentoses, there are two common pentoses monosaccharides. And they are, you have ribose, which is the sugar in RNA. And this formula is C5H10O5. And the other one is deoxyribose which is a sugar or a carb found in DNA, okay? And this form is a little different since it's called deoxy. It means it has one less oxygen. So in that case, its formula is C5H10O4, okay? So, so, this, so these are your pentose monosaccharides found, in, found basically in your, in your nucleic acids. All right, now let's go to disaccharides. Keep walking forward here. So disaccharides are formed when two monosaccharides combine. So here we go. Disaccharides. Here you have, so when glucose combines with another glucose, they form a disaccharide called maltose, which is the sugar you find in grain, like malt liquor, you know, maltose. 
you have your when glucose combines with fructose you form sucrose okay which is the basically your table sugar that's what you, you add to your coffee in the morning or to, or whatever you add to sweeten your food it's typically sucrose unless it's some, some, something artificial then you have when glucose combines with galactose okay that gives you lactose which is the sugar in milk this is what causes lactose intolerance where individuals who stop making the enzyme that, that break it down for lactase cannot tolerate this in, in their diet anymore. So you, have, so you have to drink milk that's already modified to get, get, get rid, of, rid, of, rid of the, um, the lactose. Okay. So please know for me these three disaccharides and know how you make them, what combines to make them. And so the formula for these will be, since they combine two hexoses, in theory, it should be C, C12, right? C12, H24, O12. But really, they're not. It's actually C12, H22, and O11 plus water. Remember, you must take a water out. That's why it's not this, because you must, must, must take it. Take two H's out and one, one O out. So you get this. this. This is the real formula for your disaccharides. C12, H22, O11. Not this. Okay. And then we have the polysaccharides. The most complex form of carbo carbohydrates. We, we have hundreds, even thousands of glucose molecules linked together to form polysaccharides. Okay. And there are three common forms of polysaccharides. It's going to have your glycogen. This is the form that animals, animals like us, this is how we store our carbs. Animals store carbs this way. Our muscles, our liver will store our extra carbs in this format. So we can use it later on. Okay. Then you have starch. This is how plants store their carbs. You know, the carbs, you can't have a thousand molecules of glucose hanging around in a cell, just, just by hell of it. You'd rather have one big molecule of glycogen versus a thousand small pieces of glucose. So again, remember the whole malaria thing. The number of pieces matter. So to avoid having too many pieces around, you form one big piece, okay? So start, so plants store their starch, and this is also the only digestible form of polysaccharide that, that, that we consume. So we can break starches down. It's digestible to us as animals, okay? And then you have okay, cellulose. Cellulose is a structural carbohydrate in plants, particularly it's found in plant walls, okay? So structure. Structural carb in plants. Okay, so please know for me these three common forms of polysaccharides, where you find them, and what roles they play. Okay, that's it for carbohydrates.